on Saturday, March 13, 1993, an intense low pressure system moved up the east coast of the United States. Comparable in force to a hurricane, it was one of the major winter storms of this century. High winds and heavy snowfall paralyzed communities from Alabama to Canada. Snow depths set records in many areas. Even though the worst of the storm passed west of Washington, D.C., National Airport recorded an all-time low barometric pressure. Join us as we relive the blizzard of 1993. north. 
northeast to eastern New York State by Sunday morning. Winds will shift to the southwest, then west, and the flood threat this evening will continue on the eastern shores of the bay, but will diminish along the coast. The National Weather Service is keeping a very close eye on this storm because of the unusual strength of the system. Stay tuned to NOAA Weather Radio for further information on the approaching dangerous storm. The weather observations at 12 noon, Washington, reporting sleet with a current temperature of 32 degrees. Sleet at Dulles, Baltimore, and Andrews Air Force Base, all reporting 31 degrees. Tonight, snow or mixed precipitation changing back to snow with total accumulations of 10 to 15 inches in the district and east and 12 to 18 inches in the western suburbs. Considerable blowing and drifting of snow. Lows 20 to 25. East winds shifting to west at 35 to 50 miles per hour with higher gusts. Probability of precipitation near 100%. James Russell Lowell. The first snowfall. The snow had begun in the gloaming and busily all the night had been heaping field and highway with a silence deep and white. Every pine and fir and hemlock wore ermine too dear for an earl, and the poorest twig on the elm tree was ridged inch deep with pearl. From sheds new roofed with Carrara came Chanticleer's muffled crow. The stiff rails softened to swan's down and still fluttered down the snow.
showers are especially vulnerable to high winds. Also, if you must travel, bring sunglasses, blankets, a flashlight, a battery-operated radio, flares, high-calorie food such as candy bars, and extra clothing. If you are going outside, keep warm by wearing multiple layers of light clothing, cover your head and face. Robert Bridges, London Snow. When men were all asleep, the snow came flying, in large white flakes falling on the city brown, stealthily and perpetually settling and loosely lying, hushing the latest traffic of the drowsy town. Deadening, muffling, stifling, its murmurs failing, lazily and incessantly floating down and down, silently sifting and veiling road, roof, and railing, hiding difference, making unevenness even, into angles and crevices, slowly drifting and sailing. All night it fell, and when full inches seven, it lay in the depth of its uncompacted lightness. The clouds blew off from a high and frosty heaven, and all awoke earlier for the unaccustomed brightness of the winter dawning, the strange and heavenly glare. The eye marveled, marveled, at the dazzling whiteness. The ear hearkened to the stillness of the solemn air. No sound of wheel rumbling, nor a foot falling. And the busy morning cries came thin and spare. Then boys I heard, as they went to school, calling. They gathered up the crystal manna to freeze. Their tongues with tasting, their hands with snowballing. Or rioted in a drift, plunging up to the knees or peering up from under the white mossed wonder. Oh, look at the trees, they cried. Oh, look at the trees. With lessened load, a few carts creak and blunder, following along the white deserted way, a country company long dispersed asunder, when now already the sun, in pale display, standing by Paul's high dome, spread forth below, his sparkling beams, and awoke the stir of the day, for now doors open, and war is waged with the snow, and trains of somber men, past tale of number, tread long brown paths as, the, as toward their toil they go, but even for them a while no cares encumber, their minds diverted, the daily word is unspoken, the daily thoughts of labor and sorrow slumber, at the sight of the beauty that greets them for the charm they have broken.
Ralph Waldo Emerson, The Snowstorm. Announced by all the trumpets of the sky, arrives the snow, and driving over the fields, seems nowhere to alight the whited air. Hides hill and woods, the river and the heaven, and veils the farmhouse at the garden's end. The sled and traveler stopped, courier's feet, delayed, all friends shut out, the housemates sit, around the radiant fireplace enclosed in a tumultuous privacy of storm. Come see the north wind's masonry. Out of an unseen quarry evermore, furnished with tile, the fierce artificer curves his white bastions with projected roof round every windward stake or tree or door, speeding the myriad-handed his wild work. So fanciful, so savage, naught cares he for number or proportion, mockingly on coop or kennel he hangs parian wreaths. The swan-like form invests the hidden thorn, fills up the farmer's lane from wall to wall. Mogger the farmer's sighs, and at the gate, a tapering turret overtops the work. And when his hours are numbered, and the world is all his own, retiring as he were not, leaves, when the sun appears, astonished art, to mimic in slow structures stone by stone, built in an age, the mad wind's night work, the frolic architecture of the snow. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, 
snowflakes. Out of the bosom of the air, out of the cloud folds of her garments shaken, over the woodlands brown and bare, over the harvest fields forsaken, silent and soft and slow descends the snow. Even as our cloudy fancies take suddenly shape in some divine expression, even as the troubled heart doth make in the white countenance confession, the troubled sky reveals the grief it feels. This is the poem of the air, slowly in silent syllables recorded. This is the secret of despair, long in its cloudy bosom hoarded, now whispered and revealed to wood and field. John Greenleaf Whittier, Snowbound. The sun that brief December day rose cheerless over hills of gray and, darkly circled, gave at noon a sadder light than waning moon. Slow tracing down the thickening sky its mute and ominous prophecy, a portent seeming less than threat, it sank from sight before it set. A chill no coat, however stout, of homespun stuff could quite shut out. A hard, dull bitterness of cold that checked, mid vein, the circling race, a life blood in the sharpened face, the coming of the snowstorm told. The wind blew east, we heard the roar of ocean on his wintry shore, and felt the strong pulse throbbing there beat with low rhythm our inland air. Meanwhile we did our nightly chores, brought in the wood from out of doors, littered the stalls and from the mows, raked down the herd's grass for the cows, heard the horse whinnying for his corn, and sharply clashing horn on horn, impatient down the stanchion rows, the cattle shake their walnut bows, while peering from his early perch upon the scaffold's pole of birch, the cock his crested helmet bent, and down his careless challenge sent. Unwarned by any sunset light, the gray day darkened into night. A night made hoary with the swarm and whirl dance of the blinding storm. As zigzag wavering to and fro, crossed and recrossed the winged snow. And ere the early bedtime came, the white drift piled the window frame. And through the glass, the clothesline posts looked in like tall and sheeted ghosts. So all night long the storm roared on, the morning broke without a sun, and tiny spherial tracing with lines of nature's geometric signs, and starry flake and pellicle all day the hoary meteor fell. And when the second morning shone, we looked upon a world unknown, a nothing we could call our own. Around the glistening wonder bent the blue walls of the firmament, no cloud above, no earth below, a universe of sky and snow. The old familiar sights of ours looked, took marvelous shapes, strange domes and towers rose up where sty or corn crib stood, or garden wall, or belt of wood. A smooth white mound the brush pile showed, a fenceless drift what once was road. The bridal post an old man sat with loose-flung coat and high cock hat. The well curb had a Chinese roof, and even the long sweep high aloof in its uh, slant splendor seemed to tell of Pisa's leaning miracle. A prompt, decisive man, no breath, our father wasted, boys a path. Well pleased, for wind did farmer boy count such a summons less than joy. Our buskins on our feet we drew with mittened hands and caps drawn low to guard our necks and ears from snow. We cut the solid whiteness through, and when the drift was deepest made, a tunnel walled and overlaid with dazzling crystal we had read of rare Aladdin's wondrous cave, and to our own his name we gave. With many a wish the luck were ours to test his lamp's supernal powers. 
We reached the barn with merry din, and roused the prison brutes within. The old horse thrust his long head out, and grave with wonder gazed about. The cock his lusty greeting said, and forth his speckled harem led. The oxen lashed their tails and hooked, and mild reproach of hunger looked. The horned patriarch of the sheep, like Egypt's Ammon, rose from the sleep, shook his sage head with gesture mute, and emphasized with stamp of foot. temperatures around 45 degrees. Winds will be from the south at 10 to 20 miles per hour and gusty. For tonight, cloudy with rain developing. Rain may, rain may start as a mix of freezing rain and sleet after midnight, especially in the northwest suburbs. Low temperatures 30 to 35 degrees in the northwest suburbs and in the upper 30s downtown. Winds will be from the south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. The chance of precipitation 80 percent. The forecast for Wednesday Rain tapering off late in the day with flurries possible toward evening. High temperatures in the mid to upper 40s. South winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour, shifting to the north in the afternoon hours and increasing to 15 to 20 miles per hour toward evening. The chance of rain is 90%. Sunset this evening in Washington is at 6.16. Sunrise tomorrow morning at 6.17.